Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we have a very interesting, sort of unique, at least in my mind, the slider has to have the longest flint spring of any pocket lighter that I can imagine. Starts down here, goes up, and curves rather abruptly. So much so that regular length flints will not make the turn. Slider also we have done many videos on because it has a hole, a gaping hole right in the middle of the fuel screw. I've used this as an example of why I just filled this lighter and it's not leaking. I mean I literally just filled it a minute ago right before I started this video. You guys know how infamous I am for overfilling lighters so even if I had overfilled it I could have just shaken it out and it still wouldn't have really evaporated that much faster. Maybe there's something about the tank in this one that makes it a little different. This is a Cupid Petrol lighter made in Japan. It has advertising for Aimco. It is missing a good deal of its plating. The base metal looks like brass. And the base of the lighter is a little bit odd looking in construction. It would typically be one piece, and this looks as though this upper part is a jacket that fits around the base. Looks a lot like the other roller lighters that I'm such a fan of, David Ward, many others. At first glance, a lot like the Dunhill Roller Gas or Roller Light. Certainly a lot like the Cygnus. They're so near and dear to my heart. You can see there it is marked on the spine, Cupid, with the patent number, and Japan. And it looks as though something was sprayed across the front of it maybe a chemical or maybe it was exposed to some moisture for a prolonged period of time I don't know if that was time or something that happened in a flash but it certainly took it off sort of in a splattered pattern Whereas on the back of the lighter, this makes sense here on the back of the snuffer because of the wear against the piston spring down there. It's putting tension on the snuffer arm. So plenty of dings, plating loss, blemishes. I'm sure at one point that was painted, but maybe not. But a very functional petrol lighter that while it may not look like it's in the greatest shape in the world, I'm not just going to give it away. I think it is a piece of history that someone should have in their collection and hopefully a fan of this channel as there have been multiple videos done on this slider and it has been highlighted for multiple reasons so if you were ever going to add a lighter to your collection 
because of it being featured on this channel. This is one of my favorites. It's one of the reasons why I still have it, why I haven't sold it. Probably list it for about 30 bucks and then see what kind of offers. I do have a bare minimum that I will not go below, but I love to receive offers. Don't be afraid to send me an offer on any lighter that you see in our store. The back of the lighter is still in very good condition as far as the plating goes. Nice and shiny. Some scratches on the snuffer, but as far as the plating on the body of the lighter, Still looks really good, the front as well. It's pretty much well, the front spine. The front of the lighter and then that back spine are where the damage, whatever caused that plating loss, they took the biggest hit. So if you buy this lighter, then you may need to start making short flints for yourself. In other words, breaking a flint in half or taking a flint out of the Zippo, say, when it is about halfway done. You can see that spring and the curve that it has to take it's it's uh it's rather severe and a long flint will not make that curve but if you're like me which if you're a fan of this channel then you probably are somewhat like me you got a lot of lighters sitting around with flints in them no big deal to sort of trial and error find you a short one when this lighter needs a new flint something that most folks can manage just like you'll manage when you fill this one up with fuel not overfilling it because you know that that fill screw is not going to provide you the advantage of overfilling it and still sealing that fuel inside. But when you do that, all you do is give yourself vapor lock anyway. You're not going to have vapor lock with this Cupid. Fill it to the saturation point. It will not leak. And it'll work for you every time. Until next time.